Yo guys, this is Tom from Unreal Meta and today I'm going to show you how to make your renders go from this to this with caustics in Blender. So let's start. I have this drinking glass right here and the first thing we want to do is check if all the vertices are merged. So select them all, press M and merge by distance. They are all merged. Also right click and shade smooth. And then you can go to this tab, check the face orientation. And if everything is blue, then you're good to go. Also, let's drag this a little bit higher so it's a bit above the ground because we're adding a plane in a second. And you can turn this off again. The next thing we want to do is switch from EV to cycles switch to GPU compute if you're using GPU. If you're using CPU, then also check the path guiding box, but I'm gonna use GPU and then go to light paths and you will set your light paths for the transmission like this. So you have one face here, this is the outer face. So you need one bounce, then you have this face, this is the second face, third and fourth. So you have a light ray that passes through these four faces, so you will need four light bounces. If you really want to be safe, you can set it to higher amounts like five, and I will decrease the diffuse to one and the glossiness to two and set the max bounces to five. And also I will decrease the transparent bounces to one. Okay, so we're good to go. If you have more than one glass object in your scene, so maybe like this, and light has to pass through these two objects, then you would have to set it to eight, or if you want to make sure again, to 10. Yeah, this is how it works. So maybe if you have ice cubes and stuff in it that have a glass material, just set higher transmission values. And now the interesting part of the video begins. So let's add a plane, scale it by a value of five, and this will be your ground. Then go to the properties of the plane, scroll down until you see shading, and then receive shadow caustics, and the glass will cast the shadow caustics. Now let's go to viewport shading, and we see nothing happens because we have no materials applied, of course and I deleted the light because this only works great with HDRIs or with sky textures right here like Nishida but I'm gonna use an HDRI so let's go to world search for environment texture and then just load in your HDRI I have this mountain HDRI and you see how this looks pretty great right and this is dark so let's make it a bit brighter by increasing the value I think this looks fine and now we can go to the object and begin with the glass material. So the first thing is to set the transmission to one. So our glass will be more transparent, but then we also need to decrease the roughness and let's set it to a value of zero for now. And you see nothing happens right here. We get no caustics, so why is that? This is because we have to go to the world tab settings and then shadow caustics and now you will see we get the caustics already you could leave it like that but the caustics are very dark so we have to grab a light path and then a map range node as well if we decrease the IR of the glass we see we get better caustics but the glass is just looking weird so let's reset that to a value of 1.45. This is the IOR of glass. And now we need the is diffuse ray and we plug that into the value and leave the first two values like this. To so minimum will be 1.45 and to maximum, I think 1.1 works fine. And now we're gonna plug that into the IOR and we can see we get brighter shadows so this is it without the note and here is with the note. So of course the setup looks a bit weird, but what the light path node does, this one right here, is as we render the scene, 
rays are cast into the scene from our camera and then they bounce around and there are different types of rays right here and we can just grab the diffuse ray so it's for the base color usually but we have the transmission to one so actually we have no base color and then we can manipulate this ray like the material is translucent okay and with this setup you actually would have a really nice glass with realistic caustics but we can make it even more realistic by adding imperfection maps so let's do that now so let's press shift a and search for image texture and then i have this fingerprints roughness and we're gonna add that to the roughness your object has to be unwrapped so let's go to uv editing a u and smart uv project and then we can go back to shading and let's review this roughness by clicking Control, shift and left click on the node and you see how this looks right now and the fingerprints are very big so we can press Control t if you have node wrangler on if not then go to edit preferences search for node wrangler and turn it on and then we can adjust the scale so the fingerprints are a bit smaller i think this is too small now but 1.5 works fine. So if we render this, we can see the fingerprints, but this effect is too strong, so the glass is very dark. And what we can do is grab a contrast node and plug it in between, increase the contrast a bit, maybe to a value of two. And for the next step, let's add a color ramp in between and elevate the blacks a little bit so it's not that harsh and also decrease the whites a little bit okay and now you have nice fingerprint imperfections also let's show the plane again and this will be a great result okay now let's disconnect it and hide the plane again and I want to show you the same thing with dust as well. So you can grab dust and the first thing, it's not so realistic, but you can actually just drag up the roughness a bit and your glass will look dusty. Not that much, but you see your glass looks dusty. And also you could do that with a roughness imperfection map and you get the same effect also make the dust a little bit smaller i think three or four works well let's leave it at three and also plug in a brightness contrast and your glass will look old and dusty okay and also if you want to change the color of the glass you could just do that from here a green glass red glass just don't go too strong with the color because this doesn't look realistic anymore but only a bit of color also you can add a color ramp and do the same thing with two colors so let's grab orange and then green and you can plug that into base color with a gradient texture Also, you can add a mapping node, rotate this gradient texture. So let's actually do that by previewing the color ramp. Again, press Ctrl, Shift and left click. Then let's add rotation to this. So 90 degrees. And now we can even do a rainbow glass. Okay, and let's preview this again. And you got your rainbow glass. It's easy as that, guys. Okay, so I will show you a few final renders right now. 
and I hope you liked this video, learned something. If yes, leave a thumbs up. If no, leave thumbs down. I'll see you next time and bye.